Okay, so we're back at composite integration and the one third scale model is fully laid up. And today they're going to be looking at bagging it and getting it ready for infusion. So, composites. Now this is a big deal. <laughs> so today, and actually, you're seeing this only about 10 minutes after I've seen it, because it only came up from, uh, from Saltash this morning. Um, as as you're, you're well aware, composites is absolutely fundamental to HX50. If you want a streamlined, attractive, high strength, crash worthy, uh, aircraft and you you have to go composites. The reason why that's important is because it makes a huge difference not only to the piece price of the composite parts that we make but also the capital that we need to be able to set up for composites manufacturing in scale. So this is absolutely critical to everything that we, we do within the company. The blades are composite, the crash cell is composite, the fuselage is composite, the booms composite, and all the fairings are composite. So this is a core technology for the business. Now, the way that we've proven out this process and the way that we've proven that we can do it before committing to vast amounts of expenditure on full-scale tools is that we've produced the third-scale model that you can see over there. And the third scale model is really there to prove that we can manufacture this component in a, uh, a single piece. So that's what we've done, and that was actually only completed yesterday. So this stuff is literally hot off the press. And within our, our works group, uh, we've been receiving daily updates from the, the guys down in Saltash and from uh, Tim, our guy down in, in Saltash as well. And right at the end of the day yesterday, we got this happy photograph coming back <laughs> of a pair of happy dads that had just given birth to their first baby HX50 fuselage. <laughs> so let's go and talk to the happy father. <laughs> uh, good evening. Good evening, Jason. Thank you very much. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Composites Corner. <laughs> uh, whilst uh, I've got the microphone, just a couple of introductions for the colleagues that helped produce the third scale proof of concept. We have Tim, Tim Searle and Stephen from Composites Integration, our, our resin fusion experts that, uh, that held our hand through this whole process. Um, but I suppose the, the real question is, how are we going to turn this, this dry fiber, which some of you have had a little play with this evening, into a viable composite structure airframe? Uh, we had a, a, a brainstorming session at, at, down at Salt Ash with our, our colleagues at Composites Integration back in, I think it was June? Yeah. And it was a really fruitful session. There, there was discussion about whether we should divide the airframe up into separate individual mouldings and then bring it all together as a bonded assembly, which I was pretty not keen on. Uh, bond joints add a lot of weight. They're a, a point of uh, a less reliable structure. And more importantly, they're very poor for load path. So getting the load path from the uh, the road ahead through into the airframe, we really want continuous structure. So I was pushing really hard to do it as a one-shot moulding. Tim was the uh, was the, the cautious, careful now, don't don't overdo it. You know, we, we, we've got to do this in, in a controlled fashion. So we came up with the idea of doing a, a one-third scale proof of concept. And so what you see before you here, uh, uh, the blue parts are, that's the top mould for this crown section. And you probably can't see it with the camera, but in the background, there's a floor molding there. Basically, that built up into like a, a blue coffin-shaped mold, which we put all the fibers up inside. We found a little trick to help us stick these dry fibers to, to the roof of the mold, which maybe Tim can expound on in a moment. Uh, we bagged it up. I put a pair of scissors through the bag, so we had to seal the bag again. <laughs> uh, and we infused the, the mold 
it took us quite a while to set it all up because it's the first time we've done it. But the actual infusion process, you could see the, the resin rising up inside the part, 20 minutes to completely embed that molding with, with uh, the epoxy resin. And um, this is our first attempt and we're, we're pretty chuffed with it. We're very happy with it. It, it has metallic inserts built into it. It has foam box sections box sections for the floor. It has all the structural elements that we want to capture in, in the real full scale version. So maybe back to you for a moment and... Yeah, yeah. So I think the, the, the question I would then have for, for, for you, Tim, is, I mean, you're, you're the, the resident infusion guru. Um, this was quite a difficult thing to set out to do in the first place, wasn't it? You were very conservative when we, when we started. How did it actually go on the, on the day? I mean, how easy or difficult was it to hold the fabric and how easy was it to get it infused? I, I, I assume relatively straightforward because you brought one yeah, back and you must go. <laughs> I think that the, the key with this is, um, uh, is, is really good preparation. Tooling is absolutely vital and you can see the tools. Some of you have seen these earlier, but do come and have a look and prod them and, and uh, have a good look afterwards. But we were really keen to, um, to take Tim's design make a really good set of tools that we could mold off confidently. Um, now, the thing about this, tool, this tooling system, there's six parts here. There's, there's two sides, there's, um, there, there's a top, a bottom, uh, a nose piece which we couldn't fit in the van, which, we, which you've seen in the, in the video. But all those tools have to seal together with complete vacuum integrity because this process that has been described by infusing liquid resin into this dry fabric, it's absolutely key that you get really good vacuum integrity. So we've got a vacuum seal that goes all the way around these tools that holds them together. And then we can confidently put a bag inside the tool that holds all the fabric in place and all the preparation is done. All the carbon and some of the consumables are in place. It's, uh, it's quite a complicated shape, as you can see. And then when we've got that vacuum integrity, the resin will fly in, in as Tim said, in about 20 minutes. Now, on, on, mon on Monday, what are we now, a Thursday? On Monday, there was no resin in this component at all. So on Monday, we'd bagged this all up, we checked for vacuum integrity, we'd got it all prepped up. And then on Monday, this whole assembly went into an oven because we like to infuse the resin at a warmer temperature. So this is about, four, about 40 degrees um, uh, centigrade. Remember, that's a lot less than the, the kind of pre probe temperatures that um, we've, uh, Jason has alluded to earlier. Um, and then on Monday afternoon, the resin was introduced. You saw it in the video. And uh, 20 minutes later, all that epoxy resin has um, impregnated all this, all this dry fiber and then the resin begins its curing process. And then shortly after that, we were able to demold. So I don't think I've answered your question, have I? Which was, how, how did we get all the fiber to stick in the mold? Yeah. Well, that, that's one of the things that we, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we set out to, pro, to, to demonstrate that actually this is incredibly challenging. Yeah. And actually the, the idea is here that we build early we, we get we we, we, we we build a demonstrator that ranks the problems, the challenges that are ahead of us. Because when we sat around a table, you know, some of the problems that seem really big are actually they diminish a little bit when you try it. And actually then you're pre presented with a bigger set of problems which you've got to resolve. And so we've done that. And I think this has given us a list of things to refine but actually we know that we can do it. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, that's great. And there we have it, the one third scale model finished and ready to go. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and follow along as the production of the HX50 ramps up into the new year.